Hey there, it's Kevin Kennedy, and welcome to this remake of day number one of Learn Fusion 360 in 30 days. By the end of this tutorial, you'll be able to create a Lego brick. We'll take a look at how to create a sketch, how to use the extrude feature, how to shell an object, and how to create a rectangular pattern. To start off, let's open up the data panel and create a new project folder. Click on the data panel icon in the upper left hand corner. And after it opens, we'll click new folder and title it Learn Fusion 360 in 30 days. This will create a new folder where we can organize the demo files. We can also double click on the folder to open it and then create another folder this time with the title day number one hyphen Lego. It's important that you start to create a habit of organizing your files. Otherwise, as you create more models in Fusion 360, you'll find it becomes harder to find the file you're looking for. For the sake of simplicity, I'll be using the Fusion 360 defaults for this entire tutorial series. To make sure your settings are set up the same way, you'll want to click on your name in the upper right hand corner. Go to Preferences, and then click the Restore Defaults button in the lower corner of the modal. Then, you'll want to click Apply to make sure that the defaults are saved, and click OK to close the modal. The last thing to check is your display settings. Head down to the Display Settings section and go to the Visual Style Flyout menu. For all the videos in this series, I will have the visual style set to shaded with visible edges only, which makes it easy to see all the outside edges of the model. The last thing we'll want to do before we get started is set the units for this file. If you've played with Legos before, you're likely familiar with how small a standard 2x4 Lego brick is. Because it's a fairly small object, we'll want to make sure that we model it in millimeters instead of inches. To change units, simply toggle open the Document Settings folder in the Fusion 360 browser. And as you hover over the units, you'll see a button appears that says Change Active Units. Clicking this button will give you the Change Active Units dialog box. And then you'll want to select Millimeters. Once you select Millimeters, go ahead and click OK. Now let's get started with 3D modeling the Lego brick. The first thing we'll need to do is create a new component. Now we're going to do this because it'll help keep all the sketches and bodies grouped together. And this will help further down the line if you want to make copies of the Lego. I'll go much more in depth into bodies and components and why we're doing this in day number 13 of this series. To create a new component, go to the Assemble drop down menu and select New Component. Then, you'll see in the New Component dialog box that we can name the component. I'll type out Lego for the name, and I'll click OK. Now the first step in creating the Lego block is creating a new sketch. In CAD programs, sketches are two-dimensional drawings of shapes that we can turn into three-dimensional shapes. Under the Sketch menu, you'll notice that there are a bunch of predetermined shapes that can help save us time. For the Lego brick, we'll start off by clicking on the two-point rectangle. When you start creating a sketch, you'll have to choose a plane to sketch on. In this scenario, I'll choose the top plane so our Lego is sitting top side up. Then, I'll click on the center origin and drag out with my mouse. As I drag out the rectangle, you'll notice the dimension boxes pop up. I'll type out 15.8 millimeters for the width and hit the tab key, which will lock the dimension in place. Then I'll type out 31.8 millimeters for the length and hit the tab key to lock the dimension in. Then you'll see that we have to set the rectangle in place. I'll click in the upper right hand corner to set the rectangle. You'll find yourself using a number of different commands as you model in Fusion 360. Now, anytime that you want to exit a command, simply hit the escape key on your keyboard. At this point, we have a nice two-dimensional sketch which represents the outline of a Lego, 
and we need to make it three-dimensional. To make it three-dimensional, we'll use the extrude command, which is one of the most used commands in the model workspace. The extrude command can be selected from the toolbar or by hitting the keyboard shortcut letter E. After activating the extrude command, you'll be prompted to select any profiles that you would like to extrude. In our case, we'll select the rectangle and then for the height, we'll type out 9.6 millimeters and click OK. I'll go ahead and hit the home icon in the upper right hand corner. It's located just to the left of the view cube. You'll see that clicking on it will give us a nice perspective view in the home position and we can see the thickness that we created with the extrude command. If you're connected to the internet, Fusion 360 will automatically back up your files. But clicking that save icon just above the toolbar will save versions, which allows you to go back to a specific version later on. Let's hit that save icon in the application bar and title our project Lego. You'll also notice that it displays the version number next to the title name. Next, we need to create the bumps on the top of the Lego. To do this, we'll draw a circle on the top. Select the center circle command from the sketch dropdown list or by using the keyboard shortcut letter C. Then select the top of the brick and you'll see that Fusion will automatically orient the view based on the sketch plane making it easier for us to sketch. Click on the top for the center point of the circle and drag out with your mouse. Then type out five millimeters, hit the tab key to lock the dimension in place and click with your mouse to set the circle in place. Now we'll hit the keyboard shortcut letter D, which is short for dimension. We'll want to add dimensions or measurements to the location of this circle. Click the center point of the circle and the outside of the rectangle. You'll notice as I drag out with my mouse, I can type out a dimension. I'll enter 3.9 millimeters and click enter. I'll right click to select repeat sketch dimension and I'll repeat the previous steps in the other direction. This time also entering 3.9 millimeters for the distance. At this point, we could go ahead and draw all the other circles one by one, but it would be much more efficient to use the rectangular pattern feature. But before we use the pattern feature, we'll want to add thickness to the circle. I'll hit the keyboard shortcut letter E for extrude. I'll select the circle and I'll enter 1.7 millimeters for the thickness. Now using the view cube, we can look at this from a different view to check the thickness that we just added. We'll now want to use the rectangular pattern feature to create the rest of the circles. Go to the Create drop-down menu, find the Pattern Flyout folder, and then select the rectangular pattern feature. The first thing in the dialog box is the pattern type. It defaulted to faces, but we'll want to change this to features, which will allow us to select the extrude feature in the timeline and you'll notice that it turns blue when it's selected. For the direction, we'll need to select something that follows the length of the brick. So we can simply select one of the edges. Then you'll see that we can type out four for the number of copies to pattern and 24 millimeters for the distance. You can also activate the other direction by selecting the other arrow. We'll want to type out two for the number to copy and eight millimeters for the distance. And you'll see that it gives us a nice preview. If everything looks all right, you can go ahead and click OK in the dialog box. Next, we'll want to hollow out the bottom of the Lego. To do this, we can use the Fusion 360 shell command, which allows us to easily hollow out three-dimensional bodies. Use the view cube to look at the bottom of the Lego, then select the shell command from the modify dropdown list. For the faces slash body, we'll want to select the bottom face as that's the area that we need to shell. Then you'll see that it prompts us to type an inside thickness of 1.49 millimeters. 
you'll notice that it gives us a nice preview of the shell and we can click OK to confirm the results. The last thing that we need to do is create the three center columns at the bottom of the Lego that allows Legos to snap into one another. We want to make sure that we're creating them off the inside plane of the Lego. I'll select the plane as you'll see highlighted in blue, then I'll right click and select Create Sketch. And again, Fusion will go ahead and reorient this view based on the plane of our sketch. I'll hit the keyboard shortcut letter L for line, and I'm going to select Construction in the dialog box. Now construction lines let us create sketch geometry that is only used for reference purposes. To create this line, I will move my mouse cursor over these recessed circles, and you'll see that it lets us snap into their center point. Then I'll draw the line across to the other side, snapping into the other center point. Now I'll use the keyboard shortcut letter C for center circle, and we'll have to turn off construction in the dialog box or by hitting the keyboard shortcut letter X. I'll set its center point of the circle at the center of the line where you'll see the triangle glyph appears, which represents the midpoint or center of the line. Then I'll drag my mouse cursor out until it snaps into place tangent to the circles that we created on the top of the Lego. And you know it's tangent if the tangent glyph appears, which is that circle with the line next to it. I'll go ahead and use the offset feature by calling it with the keyboard shortcut letter O, or by selecting it from the sketch dropdown list. To offset the circle, we'll select the outer circle. Then I'll type out one millimeters for the offset distance, and if the offset circle is on the outside, we can hit the flip button to move it to the inside. And of course, click OK to confirm the results. I'll hit the keyboard shortcut letter E for extrude. I'll select the circle and I'll type out 8.1 millimeters for the distance. After clicking OK in the dialog box, we'll need to use the pattern feature just like we did to the top circles. I'll select the rectangular pattern feature from the Create dropdown list. The pattern type should be set to Features as we use that last, so all we need to do is select the extrude that we just created in the timeline below. Then for the direction, I'll select the edge again, and I'll type out 3 for the number of times to copy, and 16 millimeters for the distance, and I'll click OK. Now, if I use the view cube to revolve this Lego around, you'll see that we have completed the overall Lego brick. The last thing we'll want to do is add a fillet to some of the edges, making sure that the edges aren't sharp. The fillet command can be activated from the modify dropdown list or by selecting the keyboard shortcut letter F. We'll simply need to select the lines that we want to fill it, and we'll go ahead and add a fillet of 0.2 millimeters by typing that out in the dimension box. If you've watched day number one, the original version, then go ahead and help me out by commenting below any feedback. Hopefully this is a huge improvement and I'd love to hear how it went for you. If you have any questions about making the Lego, then be sure to comment them below. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions at all about this tutorial or Fusion 360 questions in general, then be sure to comment them below. Hit that thumbs up icon if you learned something in this video and click subscribe followed by that little bell icon to be notified of more Fusion 360 tutorials.